Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz bassist Daniel Stein of the trio called Possibilities. The bandmates met at 18 years old in 2007 and would go on to become integral parts of each other's musical and their personal developments. They are excited to release their newest 2017 CD called Get Em, and the band features Daniel Stein as a versatile young bassist and native New Yorker, Tim Bennett as a saxophonist, composer, and educator in Chicago, and Peter Mannheim on drums. He's from Evanston, Illinois. Dan discussed the past, present, and future of this band called Possibilities, and they have a lot of them, along with some other very nice insights. So get to know Dan, Possibilities, and the entirety of their world, and dig this interview, my friends. Dan, thanks for reaching out. I appreciate the album. I, I always love getting new music on my radar and exploring all the cats that are out there making jazz a much more colorful place to exist. Well, thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate that you uh, took the time to check it out. And, uh, you know, it's really, it really means a lot. Right on. Let me go ahead and start off here and ask you this. From the yeah. album, sounds to me as though not only do you have a really – good combination what it sounds like is a lot of experience a very close-knit group and you have a very deep sound i want to understand how you guys came together and kind of the history of possibilities absolutely yeah so uh we go back about maybe almost 10 years now we met when we were in school we went um we went to the oberlin conservatory of music in ohio the group really started with me and the, the saxophone player tim bennett we just started practicing together and, and realized that we had a, a connection, a musical connection, just from getting together in the practice rooms and practicing different tunes and different keys and trying to push each other musically. We realized that we were able to interact on a, on a musical level that, that felt very natural to us. And then later on, the drummer, Peter Mannheim, he joined us and we became a trio and we just, as a trio, started pushing each other musically and seeking advice from older musicians and from our teachers and started to interact together as a trio and, and uh, build, build that individually and as a group. Musicians always have albums and, and musicians in their history that really motivate them and kind of form their sound. What musicians in the annals of jazz would you say are very key to the backbone of possibilities? Mm, that's a great question. It's uh, just all all of the great saxophone trios. I mean, what what comes to mind is uh, Sonny Rollins and his, his great trio records. That's a big influence, at least on me. I know um, music of, of John Coltrane is incredibly influential to all of us. The music, there's a lot more too. Um, a lot of I know me and the drummer, we listen to a lot of Brazilian music, um, a lot of music from around the world, and also soul music and. Uh, funk music and R&B and the music we grew up on. So you were 18 years old in 07 when you guys met. Do you feel like you guys kind of have a brother bond? You guys have grown up together? I mean, 10 years is a long time to be doing anything with anybody. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, we do. We have, a, we, we have a special bond just as friends and musically. And after we graduated college, we sort of went our separate ways for a while. Uh, the other two musicians lived in Chicago and I lived in New York. And the more time went on, the more we played professionally with other people. We found ourselves in great situations, but we realized that nothing felt quite like playing with each other. And so we decided to make it a priority that even if we were living in different places, we were going to start going on tours and making a, making a record. It's really the friendship between us that I think comes out in the music. It's, it's that, like, that brother, like you said, a brother bond. It's that connection that I think comes out in the music, and that's what makes it feel special to us, and hopefully it comes through to the listener. Speaking of that connection, on your latest album, Get Em on DAJ Records, talk to me about this album. How did What, what went into the, the creation of this album, and how do you feel about it now that it's out in public and in people's hands? Yeah, um, so Get Em, we, we recorded it. Um, last year we went on a, a tour for about a week and a half, sort of towards the end of the tour. We, we played a show in Cleveland on a Thursday night, and then we had a studio space booked in Brooklyn, New York, on Friday at 11 a.m. So uh -huh. we played our show in Cleveland. We drove, we drove literally through the night, maybe crashed for about an hour, and then woke up and hit the studio, and we recorded it all in, in one room together. Uh, straight to tape. So what you hear on the record, it's, it's very 
live sounding. It's very raw. There's, there, we, we weren't able to edit too much because we were all in one room, but that's how we wanted it because to us, the, the, the best part about playing is that interaction, that live feeling. So we wanted to, even though it might not sound as pristine as some other jazz records or some other records you hear, um, we wanted that sort of live, warm, um, natural kind of vibe on the record. And I think that's what you'll hear. Um, the compositions are mostly written by our saxophonist, Tim Bennett. You know, some of them are songs that we've been playing for eight, nine, ten years. Some of them are new. It's, uh, but with each song, I think you sort of hear that musical interaction in be between us and that live sort of sound. How do you feel about your collective as a group up to this point in your existence? Do you feel you're going in the right direction? How do you feel about the road that you've traveled so far? So I hope we're going in the right direction. I'm, re I'm really excited that this album is coming out because though we've been playing for 10 years, we really don't have any representation of that in, uh, on record yet. And we just have some recordings of us playing live. So to have this uh, studio recording out there that we're really doing our best to get out there and get, get people to hear it. Uh, we're doing another tour in a couple of weeks to try to promote the record. And I feel good about it. I feel good that we're playing together a lot. We're talking a lot. We're thinking about the future as a group, and we just hope to keep going, and we hope to keep playing more and keep recording more, and we hope that people like it. <laughs> so what's the future? Let's say 10 years down the line we talk. What are you going to want to tell me has happened? I think I, ideally I, I hope that we're playing festivals. I hope that we're playing overseas. I'd love to do some tours around in Europe and Japan and I would love to be able to tell you, most, first and foremost, I would love to be able to tell you that we're still playing as a group and that we're still developing and that we're still holding each other accountable uh, musically. Yeah, I, I, just, I hope that we have a few more records out and I hope that people know about it. So let me ask you this. Why do you guys love jazz? What is it about jazz that you guys love so much? That's a great question because it's, uh, in this day and age, it's, for young people, it's not always so easy to, to access jazz and a lot of people don't grow up listening to it. For me personally, uh, my father was a big jazz fan when I was growing up, so I grew up listening to it. And when I started playing it in high school and middle school, I just I love the feeling of the, of swing. I love the sound of jazz. I love the the interaction, the musical conversations that you can have within the music. And I just love I love the history. I love, I love um, it's an American art form. It's one of those things that we can be proud of as Americans, <laughs> what, what, you know, especially, which is, I think, important to keep sight of, especially in this political climate when some, we're, we're very divided as Americans. But it's important for me to, and I think for some other people to keep track of these things that these American arts and values that we can all be proud of together. Jazz is part of that. Yeah, and that, that's it for me. I can't really speak for the other members of the band, but I think they would have similar answers. So let me ask you this. This is my final question for you. Everyone has a version of who you guys are as a band, those that have seen you live, your family, your friends. But if you had to hone in on who you guys are as a band, who are you guys? First and foremost, we're three people who have a deep musical and personal connection. So I liked what you said before about the brother bond. That's who we are. We're brothers. Even though we're not literally brothers, we, we feel like brothers. It's that personal relationship that I think, that I hope, and that I think comes out in the music. I mean, that, and that's who we are. We're, we're just three people with a very strong bond, very strong attachment to each other. We want to share that love and that feeling through our music to the rest of the world. And that's what we hope we can do. That's a great way, I think, to kind of wrap everything up. Dan, thank you for taking some time out for me today. I really appreciate it. Good luck with the album and good luck with your career. Hopefully we'll see you here in KC at some point. Thanks so much, Joe. I really, really appreciate it. And thanks again for listening and for uh, helping us to share the music. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, Chicago, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Dan of Possibilities for his time, his stories, and the music. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for all things Neon Jazz, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.